You may be in your schoolyard playing when the signal comes. That signal means to stop whatever you are doing and get to the nearest safe place fast. Always remember, the flash of an atomic bomb can come at any time, no matter where you may be. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. Duck and cover. My name's Gary Nave from Humboldt, Iowa, and uh, this is a loudest siren in the world. It was built in the early 50s. It was an air raid siren during the Cold War when they were afraid the Russians were going to nuke us. Well, I was just a kid, of course, but. Yeah, you know, I heard the folks talking about it, and it, it did just put the fear in you when you was a little kid, you know. Uh, they talked about the war and the missiles and all that stuff, and it, it did uh, definitely wake you up. And they built 350 of these, and they had them scattered across the United States from one end to the other, and they had them in the top of buildings, tall buildings. And this one come off the Kansas City, Missouri Hospital, you can actually hear them from 25 miles, uh, depending on the direction of the wind, but they, they are terribly loud. It will actually start, if it was on the ground, it will start grass on fire. In this building we're in right now, it'd blow every window in this building out. You'd be deaf. It will, it will blow your eardrums out. It's uh, many times louder than a jackhammer or a jet taking off of a aircraft carrier. All we can do when we show it off or somebody wants to hear it is just let it idle. We don't dare speed it up. Not only would it blow your eardrums, but the cops would be here. I have enough trouble with them anyway. Some of them, they were remote. You could start them with a telephone. The motor and the siren is 6,000 pounds, and it's a Chrysler Hemi, and that's a very popular motor back in the early 50s. Chrysler Hemi was used in the uh, DeSotas and Dodge and Chrysler cars. They're just a well-known motor. Very durable motor. When my friend brought it to me to try to get it running, it's a six volt system and it had a 12 volt battery in it and the distributor won't stand that. It would start and just shut off. Well I read the book and I remembered myself then that it was a six volt system so I put a six volt battery in it and right away then it ran halfway decent. There's a bright flash, brighter than the sun, brighter than anything you've ever seen. If you are not ready and did not know what to do, it could hurt you in different ways. They had these for years and they tested them ever so often and then finally they, uh, the Cold War threat kind of went away and so these just sat in place and a lot of them are still, not a lot of them, but there's a few, few still in uh, different places across the United States, but it cost so much to take them down, they just left them there. 